The cabin was deep in the woods, far from any town. I rented it for a week to escape everything and find some peace. The first few days were calm. I spent my time reading, hiking, and enjoying the quiet. The only sounds were the rustling leaves and distant bird calls. One evening, as the sun set and the forest grew dark, I decided to make a fire in the old stone fireplace. The warmth and crackling flames felt nice. I settled into an old leather armchair, feeling the stress of city life fade away. Later that night, I woke up suddenly. It was pitch black, the kind of darkness you only find deep in the woods. I reached for my phone to check the time, but it was dead. The cabin was silent except for the creaks and groans of the old wood. I told myself it was just the cabin settling and tried to go back to sleep. The next night, the same thing happened. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling uneasy. This time, I thought I heard something outside. I lay still, straining to hear. There it was again, a soft rustling, like someone or something was moving through the bushes. I got up, grabbed a flashlight, and peered out the window. The beam of light cut through the darkness, but I saw nothing unusual. Over the next couple of days, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. I tried to enjoy my time, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. On the fourth night, the noises outside the cabin became more distinct, footsteps crunching through the leaves, stopping just outside my door. I didn't sleep at all that night, clutching a heavy flashlight and staring at the door until dawn. The next morning, I decided to cut my trip short. Packing my bags quickly, I felt a sense of urgency. As I loaded my car, I noticed footprints around the cabin. They weren't mine. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. I tossed the last of my things into the car and drove away, not looking back. As I reached the edge of the forest and saw the main road, the tension lifted. I never found out who or what was out there, but I didn't care. I was just relieved to be leaving. I realized then that the peace and quiet I had sought could sometimes come with a price. The woods held their own secrets, and I was glad to have made it out safely. Driving away, I felt a mix of fear and relief. The cabin, for all its rustic charm, was not the peaceful retreat I had hoped for. The experience left me with a deeper appreciation for the safety and predictability of city life. The adventure had been real, but I was glad to be heading home. Later that evening, as I unpacked my bags, I noticed something strange. In the pocket of my jacket was a small, dirty note. I unfolded it, my hands trembling. Scrawled in a shaky hand were the words. I saw you. Chills ran down my spine. My mind raced, trying to remember how it got there, but I couldn't. The realization hit me that whoever, or whatever, had been out there in the woods was closer than I ever imagined. I tried to shake off the feeling, but as I looked around my familiar apartment, the comfort I usually felt was overshadowed by a lingering sense of dread. I locked all my doors and windows that night, but sleep did not come easily. The woods might have been behind me, but their secrets followed. The peace I sought was replaced with a haunting question. Who had been watching me, and would they come looking for me again? Last fall, I decided to take a solo trip to a cabin in the woods. I needed to get away from my busy life and find some peace. The cabin was deep in the forest, far from any other houses, with a small lake nearby. I thought it would be the perfect place to spend a week riding and relaxing. The first night was peaceful. The silence was comforting, only broken by the rustling leaves and the occasional call of an owl. I fell asleep easily. The next day was uneventful. I spent the day exploring the area and writing notes for my book. As the sun set, I made dinner, read a little, and went to bed early. Around midnight, I woke up to a strange sound. It was faint but steady, like a soft tapping. I thought it was just tree branches hitting the cabin, so I rolled over and went back to sleep. The next night, the tapping came back, only louder. It seemed to be coming from outside the cabin, near the front door. I gathered the courage to check, but found nothing, 
just a dark forest outside. By the third night, the noise had turned into a steady knocking. Each knock was firm and almost intentional. I felt a shiver down my spine. I grabbed a flashlight and looked out the window, scanning the area. The beam of light showed nothing unusual, yet the knocking continued, seemingly closer now. My heart raced as I realized it wasn't the wind or animals. It was someone, or something, out there. I blocked the door with a chair and sat in the living room, listening carefully. The knocking stopped suddenly, replaced by an eerie silence. I could barely sleep that night, my mind filled with fear and questions. Morning came slowly, and the daylight brought some relief. I decided to stay alert during the day and be ready for the night. On the fourth night, the knocking started earlier, around sunset. It was louder and more demanding. I felt a rush of fear and determination. I grabbed a heavy flashlight and carefully opened the door. The forest was still, with no sign of life. I shouted into the darkness, demanding whoever was there to show themselves. Silence greeted me. Suddenly, I heard footsteps behind the cabin. I ran to the back, my flashlight cutting through the night. In the beam, I saw a figure, a person, moving quickly away. I chased after them, my heart pounding. They led me deeper into the woods, where the trees grew thicker and the darkness was almost complete. Finally, they tripped and fell. I caught up to them and saw it was a young man, his face pale and scared. He muttered apologies, explaining that he had been living in the woods for weeks after getting lost on a hike. Desperation had driven him to seek shelter, and he had been too scared to approach directly. He had hoped to scare me into leaving so he could take over the cabin. We went back to the cabin together, where I fed him and listened to his story. Over the next few days, I helped him get back on his feet and contacted the authorities to ensure he got home safely. The fear and mystery that had haunted my nights faded, replaced by a sense of relief. As he was leaving, he turned to me, his eyes wide with a lingering fear. Thank you, he said, but there's something you should know. I wasn't alone out there. There's something else in those woods, something that watches. I laughed nervously, brushing it off. But that night, as I lay in bed, the words echoed in my mind. The silence felt heavier, the darkness more menacing. And then, just as I was drifting off to sleep, I heard it again, the faint, steady tapping at the door. I always loved being alone, so when I found a small, secluded cabin in the woods for rent, I jumped at the chance. I needed a break from the city's noise and busyness. This cabin, surrounded by thick trees, seemed perfect. I packed my stuff, loaded it into my car, and headed off for what I hoped would be a peaceful getaway. The drive was uneventful, and I got to the cabin just before dark. It was even more charming than I had imagined, a simple, wooden building with a small porch and a view of the trees all around. I unpacked my bags and settled in, quickly noticing how quiet and remote it was. The only sounds were birds chirping and leaves rustling in the wind. As night fell, I lit a fire in the fireplace and made a simple dinner. The cabins inside was cozy, with wooden walls and basic furniture. I felt at ease, enjoying the quiet and the crackling fire. After dinner, I decided to read a book something I rarely had time for in the city. Around midnight, I heard a noise outside, a faint, rhythmic tapping. At first, I thought it was just an animal, but the sound kept going, getting louder and more insistent. Curiosity got the better of me, and I grabbed a flashlight to check it out. I stepped onto the porch, shining the light into the darkness. The forest was still, and I saw nothing unusual. The tapping had stopped. I went back inside, feeling a bit uneasy but convinced it was nothing. I locked the door, checked the windows, and went to bed. Just as I was about to fall asleep, the tapping started again. This time, it was joined by a shuffling sound, like someone moving around outside the cabin. My heart raced as I listened, trying to convince myself it was just my imagination. But the sounds kept coming, getting closer. I lay still, 
my mind racing with fear. I realized how alone I was. No neighbors, no cell service, no way to call for help. The noises continued, now coming from right outside my bedroom window. I held my breath, terrified of what might happen next. Suddenly, there was a loud bang on the front door. I froze, every muscle tense, as the banging continued, each thud echoing through the small cabin. I couldn't ignore it any longer. Gathering all my courage, I crept out of bed and moved silently toward the door. The banging stopped abruptly, replaced by an eerie silence. I peeked through the window next to the door, my heart pounding. In the faint moonlight, I saw a figure standing just outside. It was a man, disheveled and frantic, looking more lost and desperate than dangerous. I realized he might be in trouble. Against my better judgment, I opened the door a crack and asked if he needed help. He begged me to let him in, saying he had been lost in the woods for days. I hesitated, but his desperation seemed real. I let him in, offered him some water, and a place to sit by the fire. As he warmed up and calmed down, he told me he had been hiking and lost his way. He had been wandering for days without food or shelter. His relief at finding the cabin was obvious. Despite my initial fear, I felt some relief too. This wasn't some sinister intruder, just a lost hiker in need of help. The next morning, I guided him back to the main road, making sure he was safely on his way before I returned to the cabin. The experience had shaken me, but I was glad I had helped someone in need. My peaceful retreat had been interrupted, but it also reminded me of how unpredictable life can be. I spent the rest of my time at the cabin in relative peace, enjoying the quiet and thinking about what had happened that night. When it was time to leave, I felt a mix of relief and satisfaction. The city seemed a bit more welcoming now, and I had a story to tell, one that was both scary and unexpectedly heartwarming. However, as I was driving away, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I kept thinking about the noises I had heard before the man showed up. Why had they started again just before he arrived? And why hadn't he heard them if he was out there for days? Later, when I stopped for gas, I noticed a crumpled piece of paper stuck to the bottom of my shoe. I pulled it off and unfolded it, revealing a hastily scrawled message. Don't trust him. He's been following you. Chills ran down my spine. I looked around, but there was no sign of the man. I quickly got back into my car and drove straight home, my mind racing with fear and confusion. The cabin had seemed like a perfect escape, but now it felt like the start of something far more terrifying. I had been looking forward to the hike for weeks. The path through the thick forest promised peace and a chance to clear my head. Armed with a map, a backpack full of supplies, and a good pair of boots, I set off early in the morning, the sun barely rising. The first few hours were calm. Birds sang, and the fresh smell of pine filled the air. The trail, though rough, was well marked. I walked steadily, enjoying the sound of leaves crunching under my feet. Around noon, I stopped by a small stream. The cold water felt good as I splashed my face and refilled my water bottle. The forest felt lively and welcoming. Little did I know, the real challenge was just around the corner. As I continued my hike, I noticed the path getting narrower and harder to see. I checked my map again and again, sure I was still on the right track. But a nervous feeling started to creep in. The trees seemed to close in, and the usual sounds of the forest grew quieter. Pushing forward, I came across a split in the trail that wasn't on my map. I paused, unsure of which way to go. Trusting my gut, I picked the left path. The ground got rockier and more uneven. I had to watch each step carefully. After what felt like forever, I reached a steep hill. Climbing it was tough, but I was determined to make it to the top. Once I got there, I realized I had no idea where I was. Panic set in. My map was useless, and my phone had no signal. I took a deep breath and tried to backtrack, but everything looked the same. The trees towered over me, casting long shadows. The sun was starting to set, 
and I knew I had to find my way back before dark. I walked quickly, hoping to find something familiar. My heart pounded, and sweat ran down my face. The forest, which had seemed so friendly earlier, now felt like a maze meant to trap me. Just as I was beginning to lose hope, I heard the faint sound of running water. Following the sound, I eventually found the stream where I had stopped for lunch. Relief washed over me. From there, I knew the way back. With new energy, I followed the stream downstream, eventually finding the main trail. The familiar sights and sounds returned, leading me back to safety. The sun dipped below the horizon as I stepped out of the forest, exhausted but safe. I learned a valuable lesson that day. Nature is beautiful but unforgiving. Being prepared means respecting its power. As I drove home, the fear and anxiety slowly faded, replaced by a sense of relief. I had faced the wilderness and found my way back. But as I pulled into my driveway, a chill ran down my spine. In the rearview mirror, I could have sworn I saw something move in the back seat. I turned around quickly, but there was nothing there. Shaking off the feeling, I grabbed my backpack and headed inside. Later that night, as I lay in bed trying to sleep, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. The next morning, I found muddy footprints leading from my car to my front door. The forest might have let me go, but it seemed like something, or someone, had followed me home. I always enjoyed hiking alone. Being out in nature, hearing my footsteps on the ground, and the wind in the trees gave me a feeling of calm. One fall morning, I decided to take a trail I had never tried before. The air was fresh, and the leaves made a crunching sound under my boots. The trail was narrow and winding, hardly ever used, which I liked. After about an hour, I came to a small open space. I stopped to drink some water and take in the view. Tall trees surrounded me, their leaves a mix of gold and red. It was very peaceful. As I kept going, the path got steeper and more covered with plants. The map showed that this trail would loop back to the main path, so I pushed on. The trees grew closer together, and the underbrush thicker, making it hard to see ahead. After another hour, the trail seemed to vanish completely. I stopped, looking around for any signs. Nothing. Just trees and bushes everywhere. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. A feeling of worry started to creep in. I decided to go back the way I came, but everything looked different. The way I had come from was unrecognizable. Panic started to rise, but I took a deep breath and tried to stay calm. I tried to retrace my steps, or at least I thought I did, but soon I was even more lost. The sun was starting to set, casting long shadows. I walked faster, hoping to find something familiar, but every step seemed to lead me further into the unknown. My water was running low, and I was getting tired. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, I tripped over a hidden root and fell, twisting my ankle. Pain shot through my leg, and I struggled to stand leaning heavily on a nearby tree. I tried to move forward, but each step hurt badly. As darkness began to fall, I knew I couldn't go much further. I found a small clearing and gathered some fallen branches to make a rough shelter. The temperature was dropping fast, and I did my best to keep warm. Lying there in the dark, every sound seemed louder. The rustling of leaves, the distant call of an owl, and the occasional snap of a twig kept me on edge. I couldn't sleep. I just lay there, shivering and hoping for daylight. The night felt endless, but finally, the sky began to lighten. I hobbled to my feet using a sturdy branch as a makeshift crutch. Determined to find my way out, I started walking again, carefully this time. Hours passed, and my hope was fading, but then I heard it, a distant sound of rushing water. Following the noise, I soon found a small stream. Relief washed over me. I knew that following the stream would eventually lead to people. I followed the stream for what felt like forever, but finally, I saw a break in the trees. Emerging from the forest, I found myself on a familiar main trail. I nearly collapsed in relief. 
It took me another hour to make it back to my car, but I didn't care. I was safe. I sat in my car, letting the heater warm me up, and drank the last of my water. I had never felt such gratitude for the simple things, safety, warmth, and the ability to get help. As I looked around, something caught my eye. On the edge of the woods, just before the trees swallowed up the trail, I saw something moving. It was a figure, watching me from the shadows. I blinked, and it was gone. A chill ran down my spine. I quickly started my car and drove away, my heart pounding. As I sped down the road, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was still being watched. The forest had taught me a lesson about respect and being prepared, but it had also left me with a sense of unease. I knew I would hike again, but the memory of that figure in the woods would always haunt me. I had always loved hiking. It was my way to escape from the mess of daily life. One Saturday, I decided to check out a trail I'd never been on before, deep in the forest. The morning was cool, and the sun was just starting to rise as I began my hike. The trail was narrow, winding through thick trees and bushes. As I walked, I felt the usual thrill of being alone in nature, surrounded by the sounds of birds and rustling leaves. About an hour in, I noticed the path getting harder to see. The ground was uneven, and I had to watch my step to avoid tripping over roots and rocks. The further I went, the more alone I felt. The trail markers became few and far between, and eventually, I realized I hadn't seen one in a while. I checked my map, but it didn't seem to match what was around me. I was lost. I decided to turn back, but the forest looked different on the way back. Every tree looked the same, and the path I thought I had come from seemed to disappear. Panic started to set in. I tried to stay calm and remember my training, stay put, save energy, and use the whistle in my backpack if needed. I found a small clearing and sat down to think. The hours passed slowly, and the sun began to set. The temperature dropped, and I knew I had to get ready for the night. I gathered some sticks and dry leaves to make a small fire hoping it would keep me warm and signal anyone who might be looking for me. The night was long and filled with strange noises. Every rustle and crack made my heart race. I barely slept, keeping an eye on the flickering flames and listening for any sign of help. When dawn finally came, I felt a mix of relief and exhaustion. I knew I had to try and find my way back again. As I packed up my things, I heard a distant sound, the faint roar of a river. I hadn't noticed it before, but now it was clear. I decided to follow the sound, hoping it would lead me to something familiar or, better yet, other hikers. The walk was tough, and the ground was rougher than before. I stumbled and fell many times, but I kept going, driven by the hope of finding my way out. Eventually, I reached the river. The sight of flowing water filled me with a sense of direction and hope. I followed the river downstream knowing it would eventually lead to civilization. Hours passed, and just as I was beginning to doubt myself again, I saw a bridge in the distance. It wasn't on the map, but it was man-made, and that meant people. As I approached the bridge, I heard voices. I shouted for help, my voice cracking from thirst and fear. A group of hikers appeared, their faces a mix of surprise and concern. They offered me water and food, and after hearing my story, they helped me back to their campsite, where I finally felt safe again. Days after, I thought about what had happened. Getting lost had been terrifying, but it also taught me a lot about my own strength and the kindness of strangers. I learned that even in the scariest moments, there can be a way out if you stay focused and keep moving forward. But as I lay in bed one night, a thought hit me. When I first heard the river, I hadn't seen it on my map either. And that bridge, it wasn't listed anywhere. I got up and checked my map again, tracing my route. The more I looked, the more certain I became. There was no river on that trail, and no bridge where I had crossed. My heart raced as I realized what this meant. I wasn't lost on a regular trail. Something had drawn me in, something that wasn't supposed to be there. 
I tried to shake the feeling, but the memory of that night, the sounds in the dark, and the strange sense of being watched stayed with me. The forest was no longer a place of peace for me. It was a place that hid secrets, waiting for the next person to wander too far off the path.